They finally released it, and it's a masterpiece, baby. The world is gorgeous. Exploring is a complete and utter dream. And I got my skull crushed by a big scary guy for like 16 hours straight. And I loved every minute of it. Well, almost every minute of it. Oh, who thinks this is a... Today, I want to talk about what I thought were the best bosses in the DLC, and also what I thought were the worst bosses in the DLC. Because as much as I thought the majority of the DLC was amazing, there definitely were a couple of stinkers sprinkled in the middle there. But we're going to start off positive and talk about the best bosses. And immediately, we're starting off with an opinion that I know for a fact every single one of you is going to call me stupid for. Now, the vow will be honoured. And my lord brother's soul will return. So that he may be my consort. He, they, they just brought him, he's back. It's for round two. What? I, what? This boss has very rapidly become one of the most hated bosses in all of Elden Ring. And as much as I like the boss, I, I see where people are coming from. Aww. Oh my fucking Christ, I'm alive. Phase one is like a fantastic moveset. It's super satisfying to dodge and it feels very fair. But phase two, it's a little bit over the top. Oh my God, what the fuck is he doing? What's he doing now? What's he doing now? What is, there's like six of him. How does he even? Oh my fucking God. I'm sorry, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, please. I don't, I'm... Oh, oh, he's dead. Oh. Phase two is just so gaudy. It's so bright and colorful and there's flashing lights all over your screen and Radan can duplicate himself like five times and he can fly and he hits you once and you instantly die. <gasps> But behind all of the bright colours and flashing lights, his moveset is once again shockingly fair. Despite the fact that the entire second phase looks like an illegal rave, the boss's moveset is very learnable. Most of his moves in phase two are identical to moves in phase one. The only difference is that there's extra holy damage beams added on top. The purpose of these beams is to force you to have good positioning. Not only do you have to time your roll correctly, but you also have to roll in the right direction direction, or else you get frame trapped by the follow-up holy damage that Mikola is throwing all over the place. And if you do fail a dodge roll and do get hit, you're punished even harder than usual. But because the moves are mostly the same as phase one, the timing part should be something that you already understand. Now you just have to learn the correct positioning too. If you dodge to his right, you get frame trapped, but if you dodge to his left, you don't. There are some moves that are super unintuitive to dodge though, mostly the after image attacks where Radan will duplicate himself multiple times to slam the ground. But they are dodgeable. For the rocks move, it's simple. When he spawns the rocks, you sprint backwards as far as you can. When the rocks are about to hit you, you run to the side and jump. Then you continue running backwards. Radan will do this after image stuff four times and then land on the fifth. Sprinting backwards dodges the first four and then you roll into him on the fifth one. There's also this, where he leaps up into the sky and does more after image stuff. If if you react fast enough, you can literally just sprint to the right and all of it except the final slam will miss you. You have to sprint to the right though. If you sprint to the left, you like die and stuff. There's also this after image dash that he does on the ground, which seems insanely scary at first, but with good positioning, it's actually one of the easiest moves to dodge in his entire kit. You can literally just run directly underneath his legs or strafe around him and it will completely miss you. No rolling required. If you're too far away for that, a roll to the right and then a roll inwards should dodge this with good roll timing. This boss has a reputation for being incredibly unfair, but despite that, I find his moveset pretty reasonable. But I think the reason it has this reputation and the thing that most people are initially complaining about is visibility issues. And a boss being hard because of its moveset is fine, but being hard because you just can't see through all the particle effects is very frustrating. Personally, I got used to all the flashing lights pretty fast but the part that still trips me up is Mikola's hair. If you're behind Radan, the entire screen is covered by Mikola's luscious locks and it is incredibly annoying. The visibility issues are a problem, but for my personal tastes, it didn't detract from the boss enough to make me dislike him. I enjoyed him quite a lot. He was super challenging and learning all the phase two attacks took me a very long time, but the difficulty is what made me enjoy it so much. And I would say he's my favorite boss in the DLC if it wasn't for one thing. Just one single thing about the boss that is so frustrating that I can't get over it. And that's this move. 
This move might look unassuming, but it is so unbelievably lame that it honestly almost ruins the entire fight for me. I swear I have not iframed this move a single time ever. Not once, not even by accident. It has never ever happened to me. If you dodge the first slash in any direction you roll, the second slash is fast enough that it is seemingly guaranteed to hit you in the head. The first two slashes happen too quickly for them to both be rolled at the same time. I literally just don't have any clue how you're meant to dodge this. And I'm clearly not alone in thinking this move is bullshit. Because one of the best no-hit runners in the world, known as Ongbol, he uploaded a video of himself hitlessing Radan and Mikola. And you know what he does to dodge this triple slash attack? He uses the new physic tier that gives you a Sekiro style deflection parry. Like this move is so lame that he doesn't even try and roll it, he just uses a perfect guard. And as much as it's incredibly based from him to use a new tool at his disposal to hitless a fight, it would be incredibly lame if this was essentially mandatory to be able to not take damage to this one simple move. This boss, to me at least, is almost fantastic. This one move just lets it down so so insanely hard. But everyone else's complaints about the holy damage laser light show stuff, that part doesn't really bother me. And in spite of that one frame trap move, I do think this boss is definitely my second favourite in the entire DLC, which will definitely be a controversial opinion to some of you. And as much as he's insanely difficult, he still isn't as hard as Melania. But now, let me talk about what I think might not just be the best fight in the DLC, but the best boss in all of Elden Ring. This boss, in my eyes, is perfect. Everything about it is flawless. The reveal of him in his cutscene is incredible. The score over the top of the fight is mesmerizing. His moveset is a joy to fight against. And visually, he is beautiful. They took a boss literally called the Lord of Frenzied Flame, whose entire theme is madness and frenzy, and yet they made him move so gracefully. Every swing is so smooth and intentional. He floats around the arena so elegantly, like he's dancing with the player. He doesn't have the most difficult moveset, but it's challenging enough to where you feel constantly engaged. And he has some moves that are just so satisfying to dodge. The phase change took me a while to figure out, but you can run under him to make the ball miss and then jump as it lands to dodge the AoE. All of his projectile attacks can be strafed at close range too. Then there's some really cool crouch punishes. The easiest one to execute is on this spin attack. You roll the first two spins, then simply walk walk up to him and crouch, and the last three spins will swing over your head. There's crouch dodges on a lot of bosses in Elden Ring, but on this fight, because of his slower swings, they're actually quite easy to pull off. On other bosses, these crouch dodges are often much, much more precise. Midra is such a banger boss fight, it might be my favourite boss in all of Elden Ring. There is something to note though, which is that his attacks build up madness on you, which does allow him to literally one-shot you with certain moves. But I think because his moveset is so good and so consistent to dodge, with no dumb RNG and no stupid frame traps, that these one shots are actually just completely fine. Just don't get shot by the massive laser beam and you don't die. But now that we've discussed the high highs of the Elden Ring DLC, we briefly need to delve into its low lows. Now let's talk about what I think is the worst bosses in Shadow of the Erd Tree. First off is a boss called Jory. Elder Inquisitor. This fight is truly completely dog shit. The boss stands far away from you and spams holy projectiles at you. Most of them can be strafed or jumped, but you just have to spend a bunch of time sprinting towards the boss. Then, when you finally close the distance, the boss teleports away from you and does the exact same thing again. So you're just constantly playing catch up to the boss while it runs away from you. It does have some melee attacks, but it doesn't have many, and it doesn't always use them 
either. It prefers to just run away from you. But wait, 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 that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that the boss also summons enemies. It summons these random shitter enemies to fire more projectiles at you, meaning any punished windows that the boss usually gives you get defended by the summons. There's also the fat guy summon who chases you around and breathes fire and makes your controller shake every time he dashes. And in phase two of the boss, it will summon five enemies at a time that all chase you around and spam projectiles at you. The entire fight is just you sprinting around the arena like an idiot, hoping you don't get frame trapped by five summons shooting at you all at the same time. The only single saving grace of this fight is that the boss is backstabbable. So you can get easy backstabs and even backstab loop the boss until it dies. And if your saving grace as a boss is that you can be cheesed, then you're probably a really, really bad boss fight. This guy really sucks, but believe it or not, Shadow of the Erd Tree boasts one boss that is even worse than this one. A boss fight that is just, just truly an abomination. Although I think calling it a boss fight might be a little bit controversial. But this fight is just so bad that I have to bring it up in this video, boss fight or otherwise. And the fight in question, you encounter right at the very end of the DLC, where you fight Mikola's disciples. This doesn't have a boss health bar, but it's a mandatory fight if you want to complete the DLC, where all of Mikola's followers jump you in a dark alleyway and steal your wallet. This fight is just absolutely disgusting. At first, just one of them comes out to fight, but about 20 seconds into your 1v1, a second dude comes out and starts swinging dumb swords at me, and he summons holy projectiles that if I don't roll them, literally instantaneously kill me. And then, when I kill one of them, you wouldn't believe it, but two more enemies appear, and they start running at me with rage in their eyes trying to kill me. And they literally never relent ever. Also, most of them have a health bot to heal themselves with. I have no idea how they playtested this and thought it was a good idea. Even with a summon, a summon that's part of the story, it's still completely insane. And the enemies will randomly de-aggro from your summon back onto you anyway. So at its hardest, there are three NPC invaders sprinting at you in a straight line, constantly trying to bash your head in. One of them throws rot pots at you that rot you in one throw. One of them quite literally kicks the shit out of you. One of them has dual wielded bleed curved swords and all of them, no exceptions, are massive pieces of shit. Elden Ring's base game already has some multi-enemy boss fights. Like take Godskin Duo for example. Everyone hates this boss, right? This boss is garbage and everybody knows it. But there's a hidden mechanic in this boss fight and other multi-enemy fights like it that is designed to make it more manageable. Each of the enemies in the fight will take one of two roles. One will be aggressive, actively pursuing the player, while the other will be generally passive. The passive enemy just stands back and mostly watches, occasionally throwing out a projectile or a single slash or something. Then the aggressive enemy attacks you just like any other boss would. Now this doesn't stop the bosses from both attacking you at once and frame trapping you, but it does make it slightly less difficult to manage the two enemies at once. Every single multi-enemy boss fight functions this way, to make sure that the player has at least a little bit of room to breathe. But not this fight, because these guys are just NPC invaders. They do not have this passive and aggressive mechanic at all. They just constantly run at you unendingly. They never go passive, they never take a break, they are constantly running at you never giving you a single moment to breathe. And there's three of them at once. Did I mention there's three of them? There's three of them at one. I spent a very long time just bashing my head against this fight. And I got so sick of it that I literally respect my entire character just to kill them. I went and picked up a fingerprint shield. I got scholar's shield and I just spammed shield crash until I won. And this was easily the most stuck I got on the entire DLC, including Radan. That guy's a bitch compared to these guys. And yeah, I know, technically it's not a boss. I get it, I know, but it is a mandatory encounter to beat the DLC. And it made me want to kill myself. And it's my video, so I'm including it anyway, because I don't even care what you guys, I don't 
And you know what sucks the most about this? The worst part about it is that you can actually make this fight easier. If you don't talk to the NPCs and don't do their quests and completely ignore them the entire time, then you can reduce the number of NPCs that will invade you in this encounter. On my second playthrough, I got it down to just three enemies with only two enemies at a time. Maybe you can reduce it further than that, but if that's true, I don't know how yet. And on the one hand, it's great for second playthroughs, but on the other hand, it's so insanely lame. You're literally incentivized to ignore the quests on subsequent playthroughs just to make one fight a whole lot less unbearable. It's a terrible design for a fight, and it's unskippable on your way to the final boss. Complete F-tier garbage, one of the worst fights in all of Elden Ring. But you know what? There is a silver lining here, because it made me realize that Gideon Offner really wasn't so bad in the end, was he? You know, maybe maybe we treated him too harshly. So that's what I think is the best and worst boss fights in the Elden Ring DLC. The lows sure are low, but the highs are so insanely high that it truly makes up for it. Unless, of course, you're on Twitter. In which case you just hated the entire DLC top to bottom. Thanks for watching.